Hello and welcome to Hudson Champions League match day three. Let's analyze the game. Uh, the games we have on Wednesday, 25th of October. Ciao, Dani. Hello, ciao, ciao. Alvaro Romeo. Some good games, especially PSG, Milan, or Newcastle, Borussia Dortmund in this uh, group of death, uh, group F. So, guys, let's not waste any time. There are Many things to be decided. Some teams can be almost, almost in the last 16 round. Remember, as always, leave your comments, tell us your tips, press the like, subscribe, and now let's go on with the show. And remember as well, uh, if you want to bet in this uh, Champions League, we have an exclusive offer with one X bet, so you can get uh, up to 130% with the welcome bonus. Use our promo code. Use the link you have in the description. Uh, important uh, group, group E, and we are going to start with a key game, in my opinion, for qualifying for the next round. I'm talking... About Feyenoord, Lazio. Feyenoord with three points, Lazio with four, and Atletico with four. So between these three teams, uh, two will qualify. And I think Atletico, they are favorites. Uh, so this Feyenoord, Lazio is key. Dani, Lazio arriving to this game in the best moment of the season because they started uh, really bad, but they beat Sassuolo, as you predicted. They beat Atalanta, four wins in the last five. They were able to win in Celtic Park with that uh, header scored by Pedro. But it's not easy to beat uh, Feyenoord at home. Um, so this is a tricky one for Lazio and an important one. Considering last season in the Europa League, they traveled to Feyenoord to do the Coip and they lost 1-0 and got relegated to the Conference League, which they then got knocked out from. So yes, Lazio knows the difficulty of traveling to the Netherlands, but is Lazio in a good uh, state of form, probably the best they've ever played this season. Very good comebacks against Celtic, against Atalanta, plus the comeback as well against Atletico. If we have to say something about Sarri's men, is they don't give up easily. They are very, very resilient. Now, this season, something hasn't clicked. I think it's about a bit of physical condition at the beginning, but also the distances between the midfield, the attack, the defense, the shape wasn't quite there against Sassuolo. That was only the second clean sheet of the season for a team that last season kept over 20 in Serie A. Uh, only won five games out of 11, but yes, they are improving. I think what are the uh, tactical uh, nuisances that uh, Sarri needs to solve? First of all, how to replace Milinkovic Savic. And uh, we saw the Dachi Kamada. As much as he's a very good player, he's not that kind of holding midfielder box to box. He's more of a... Uh, player that plays behind the striker, but that's, that position is already covered by Luis Alberto, who, by the way, played really well against Sassuolo. So, with the introduction of Genduzzi, of Rovella, I think they're finding a little bit more balance. And Castellanos is contributing to goal to assist, which is a good news. If Immobile is not fit as he should be. Before the international break, the stats for Lazio didn't look very good. They had a lot of possession, but only 10th for pass completed in the box. They struggled to keep a high line. They were taking a lot of shots for non-dangerous positions. So really, uh, if you look at expected goal difference, they were uh, pretty low in terms of what they should, could have scored, should have scored, and what they actually conceded. When it comes to Feyenoord, only one defeat in the last seven. The good news is that Santiago Jimenez, the Mexican striker, is back from suspension. He scored 13 in nine league games. Maybe they he's sc- injured. Maybe he's injured. Let's see. He might have picked up an injury against yeah, yeah, yeah. he scored. Okay, that's that's a mm-hmm. that, that's a good that's a good that's a good one to say. Obviously, he's the main man. Scored 21 fire in the last five home games. And last season in Europe, they scored quite a lot of goals. Six against Sturm Graz, seven against Shakhtar, also beat Roma 1-0. I think Lazio are going to get a result here too. Mm-hmm. Asian handicap plus 0.5, which basically is a double chance. 191. How good is that? Well, it's very good, Danny, because uh, Feyenoord, they are super favorites for this game. I think this is a tricky one for Lazio. We saw Alvaro in the game at the Metropolitano, uh, how uh, good Feyenoord is, how competitive uh, they are. Also in the Redivisie won the last seven, but perhaps it's too favorite. No, These uh, are really low odds to trust on uh, Feyenoord. Yeah, I agree. And uh, 
more or less, I, I will tend to back what Daniele has backed. Uh, but since uh, I am rather conservative when it comes to betting, and then I leave it to the user or to our followers to make an ACA with the odds or an ACA or a combination with the odds that uh, we suggest. I'm going to go with the Asian handicap plus 0.75 for Lazio, which I like as well anyway, because the money is good and it pays 173. So basically, if uh, you know, I think that uh, there is a, a good chance that this can happen and um, I will happily back this uh, because Lazio is uh, arriving to this game into a decent moment. I mean, they lost one game in October. Um, sorry, they lost one game in September and um, it was against Milan. And then in early September, they lost uh, against Juventus as well. But they they have lost against two big teams. And uh, I know that Juve at the time when they lost, uh, when Lazio lost against them, maybe weren't in the best place. But still, uh, other than that, Lazio has uh, got a point against Atletico de Madrid and they have negotiated decently uh, the season, I would say. Uh, Results-wise, there's very little to complain. And uh, when it comes to Feyenoord, it's the same story, really, because they lost to Atletico. Even though they started winning that game, um, they got an advantage twice because Hermoso scored an on goal. Then uh, Hanko scored for them. It was the 1-0 for Feyenoord and 2-1 for Feyenoord. But then Atletico managed to you know, uh, trigger the remontada and they won that game 3-2. But Feyenoord uh, ran this season. It's been pretty decent. I mean, they lost in the um, er in early August against the PSV in Doven, one game. Um, and since then, their next defeat was against the Atletico de Madrid in October. So it's a team that doesn't lose a lot. And... I still believe that the odds are a bit, little bit disproportionate because Feyenoord, yes, they have been doing a very good season, but uh, Lazio at the end of the day is not a bad team. And I think that the odds could be or should be more leveled. All that said, let's take advantage of this, really. This is uh, my policy here. So Asian Handicap plus 0 0.75 for Lazio, 173. And um, both teams to score, I like it. If Santiago Jimenez plays, which is still a doubt, uh, Feyenoord will have more chances of scoring. Same thing applies to Chiro Immobile, who played only 10 minutes uh, in the weekend. If Immobile plays uh, as uh, he did against Sassuolo, but this time he starts, I think that the both teams to score is a sure thing. Well, uh, with Lu Luis Alberto also shining, scoring at the weekend, this is a very good game. You are both, uh, both uh, back in Lazio because the odds are good uh, to do so. If you are going for a double chance, for instance, for Lazio, is 2.0 and also I found really good odds in the other game in this group uh, Celtic Atletico de Madrid in this case if we back Atletico de Madrid Álvaro because they are really informed they show it again at the weekend in La Liga beating 3-0 uh, Celta also they were helped uh, by Celta being down to 10 men uh, Griezmann scoring a hat-trick they are in really good form in La Liga, the only concern, in my opinion, not to put my money on Atletico and these good odds is the poor form away in the Champions League. The last victory was in March 22 against Man United, by the way, in Old Trafford. They haven't won in the last five Champions League games and uh, last season they were so poor against uh, weak teams, let's say. Yeah, but I think that in 2023, Atletico de Madrid has been... Uh, the best Spanish club, uh, number-wise, at least uh, domestically. Uh, the thing is that they didn't win La Liga because, you know, they had a really good, bad, a really bad closing of 2022, and uh, that's why uh, they weren't able to fight for the title in the title race until the very end. But Atletico this year has been fantastic, really, and uh, they have had as well. Uh, a couple of games in which they weren't perfect. Uh, let's not forget, for example, that they couldn't beat Lazio, even though it looked like it was in their hands. But generally speaking, Atletico is a very reliable side right now. I mean, the last time they lost the game, it was against Valencia in mid-September. But uh, ever since that defeat, they beat Real Madrid. And then they have negotiated every game with the uh, with a win, really. I mean, uh, winning, for example, beating Feyenoord, uh, beating Real Sociedad. Uh, in the weekend, they beat Celta de Vigo away with a hat-trick from Antoine Griezmann. One thing I like about Atletico de Madrid is that Simeone um, is not rotating a lot, so he's using what he's got. He's uh, um, repeating many lineups or trying to, at least, there are six or seven players that are the backbone of Atletico who always play unless they are injured, and this is very good for the team because they are... Um, consolidating more or less a couple of uh, um, 
you know, I would say like a really good things. Uh, the defense is working more or less okay, and then the attacking moves are very automated uh, because Morata and Antoine Griezmann and understand each other very well, and because Nahuel Molina on the right is providing all the depth that uh, you need to provide from that channel. Marcos Llorente is playing a lot, and um, I think that his uh, um, apparitions, appearances um, in the in the edge of the box are helping Atletico a lot. I think that Atletico is doing very well, and uh, I think that this game of offers a chance for Atletico de Madrid um, and offers a chance for Atletico to get six points out of six in this double header that they will have um, because they are going to play against Celtic twice in, in as many weeks or twice in three weeks, sorry. Um, Celtic, on the other hand, yes, uh, I think that they are coming, and this is the usual thing, in a good moment because domestically they are rarely losing a football game. I mean, they, they beat Hearts this weekend for one, and uh, the last time they won, uh, the, sorry, they lost a, a domestic home was in uh, in August. In the, um, I think that they lost against uh, Kilmarnock. Yes, but other than that, you know, their run at home is fantastic. But then the Champions League starts, and the story changes differently. Uh, and they have only won only one of the last 23 Champions League group stage matches. Uh, that when it comes to Celtic, so I'm going to back Atletico. I think they are a better side. Griezmann is in a good form. Morata is scoring. Atletico to win 2-0-4. Otherwise, an Asian handicap minus 0 0.25, 170. And I think that those odds are fantastic. And perhaps, Dani, apart from back in Atletico de Madrid, as I said at the beginning, I think <coughs> good the odds, uh, perhaps going for the goals, because this is a different Atletico. Eh? They are scoring and they play more offensive football. It's 1.8 if we go for over 2.5 goals. And that's what I'm going for. Over two of my goals, 1.8. We also have to point out that only two clean sheets in the last seven for Atletico Madrid, perhaps because they play a little bit more on the front foot. On the other hand, Celtic at home to score a goal is always a decent value. Look, Celtic, I think, were a little bit unlucky against Lazio. The 2 nil scored uh, by Kyogo, I think, was Rulo offside because of marginal offside of Luis Palma from Honduras. Then they got undone. In the end, as we mentioned, they are unbeaten in the Scottish Premiership, but they have lost three out of three in other competitions. So they're not unbeatable, even domestically. Still, I think they haven't picked, they haven't hit form, but, you know, they only dropped two points from possible 27, and their biggest rival, Rangers, have already sacked their manager. So obviously the season, domestically, under Brendan Rodgers, looks very very good. Uh, there are a couple of very good players and informed players for Celtic. We mentioned Kyogo scored for the eighth consecutive game and O'Reilly scored six goals in 12 appearances this season. Absolutely thriving under Brenda Rogers. Um, they sit pretty comfortably, as I said, in, in, the, in the domestic league. And obviously, the key factor for Celtic is can they advance into European competition after December? That's really important. And I think they're going to go for it to try and score a goal. As I said, when they play at home, normally the goal is the value, but you cannot underestimate how good Atletico Madrid have been so far. Yes, I go for over 2.5 goals, 180. Well, uh, good odds uh, to back Atletico de Madrid. Let's go to the group of death, uh, Group F. And here uh, it's a very important match day because if the home teams, uh, Newcastle and PSG, win the games, uh, I think they will have uh, one foot in the last 16 round. First game that we are going to analyze is uh, Newcastle, Borussia Dortmund. Newcastle, super favorite. It's uh, strange not to much. see a team, perhaps too much, yeah, because they don't have... European pedigree, as Borussia Dortmund has, is 1.8 for Newcastle to win. But Danny, they are very strong at home. They show it at the weekend against Crystal Palace. Of course, uh, in our mind, it's also the 4-1 against PSG with all the pace, with all the pressure that they put. And uh, Dortmund is a team that when they travel, also in Europe, there are a lot of doubts. Only one victory in the last nine away games in the Champions League. Perhaps that's why we see these low odds for Newcastle. There is no doubt that at the moment Newcastle are the most informed Premier League side at the moment. They won seven of the last nine. They got the best attack in the Premier League, best expected goals, best big chances created. Of course, the physical condition is getting better. And after a very tough start of the season because of the calendar, they had to play uh, Manchester City, they had to play Liverpool, Aston Villa, so all top sides. Now the calendar is getting a little bit better, but also they are getting better physically. At home this season, they've already beat and Manchester City and PSG. So I think 
at the moment, yeah, they're a very difficult side to, to play against. Whether they are the best team in England, probably not. But I think the 4-1 scoreline against PSG is a little bit deceptive. PSG went there with a very reckless formation. Newcastle were very good at taking the chances. PSG missed a couple of ones, so you wouldn't necessarily have to read too much into it. But this is going to be... A different story because they play, as you mentioned, against a side that, despite not having any superstar in their in 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 the ranks, like the previous years with Haaland, Bellingham, they are experienced. They do play in the Champions League every year, and they got the pedigree as well. And I think they will approach the game differently from what they did at PSG, where they were a little bit too timid. I think. Um, what I like about this Borussia Dortmund side is that, as I said, they don't have any big stars this season, but they are stronger collectively. They seem to play for each other a little bit more to battle more. And uh, yes, at the weekend, they got a decent win against Werder Bremen. A goal from Julian Brandt, seven contributions in his last seven league games, a good assist from Mecha. Uh, Kobel, the goalkeeper, only had one save to make. So it's a, it is a Borussia Dortmund that makes you believe perhaps this season they could battle a little bit more. I don't think they're going to be in the contention to win the title anyway. Away from home, three wins, one defeat, one draw, no clean sheet so far away from home for Borussia Dortmund. So the goal line could be a value here. I, f- I go for, uh, for an upset. I, I don't like when um, I think, you know, Newcastle, a team, remember, from Port 4, so favorite. I don't fancy it. X2, 215. Indeed, I can understand why uh, why they are the favorites, uh, but uh, in my opinion, they are two favorites. The odds are too low, Alvaro, for Newcastle to win. Yeah, but uh, I'm not going to back Dortmund away from home. I mean, look, uh, for this program, I have identified two games that are very attractive to bet. Uh, one is barcelona Shakhtar, and the other one, Young Boys Manchester City. But in a lesser way, the Group F uh, is interesting too. Why? Uh, because I'm pretty certain that the four sides that are competing here are going to get more points at home than away. Uh, every single mer- member of this group, I'm pretty sure about that. And in fact, we haven't had any away win in Group F yet. Um, and in such a level, the group, every team relies a lot on their home form to untie the games. And I think that Newcastle United is basically using their home to win games. And uh, what they did in the last game against PSG, uh, Daniele wasn't that impressed, but I was very impressed because uh, St. James's Park was even cheering and celebrating tackles for, from Gordon. I mean, this is the excitement they have right now. And at home, they are taking the Champions League as a gift. And Newcastle United is using and channeling the energy they are getting from the crowd uh, to play better. And I think that... Uh, Energetically or uh, energetically speaking, yeah, uh, it's unparalleled, really. And the best thing about Newcastle United is that they've got so many players who actually don't belong to the profile of players that you will um, associate with a with an estate club. Murphy, Wilson, Longstaff, Gordon, these guys were in the score sheet against Crystal Palace in the weekend. Who would have said? four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, that these players were uh, so good or could be so good, especially Murphy. Murphy has improved a lot. I remember commentating games of Murphy when he was playing for West Brom Beach Albion, and now he has become, I want to say, a super player, of course not, but a really, really positive, useful tool for Newcastle United. I like uh, what they are doing, and um, I think that this game is going to be very energetic, that's for sure, uh, because Newcastle United is the third in tackles in the Champions League. They are doing many just to win the ball back, and then when it comes to Borussia Dortmund, who, won, who beat uh, Bremen, by the way, in the weekend, um, they are leading uh, the charge in tackles and recoveries, uh, or at least two players of them, like Hammers and Slaughterbeck, uh, because they are trying to get the ball back. Uh, they are uh, going at it with a, a very good attitude as well, but they are missing stars. I think Newcastle United doesn't have many either, but they've got better players, generally speaking, and on top of that, they are playing at home. This, go- this game, by the way, is very special probably for Alexander Isak if he plays, because he played for Dortmund four years ago before he, he went to Real Sociedad. So, you know, 
I think that uh, I'm going to back Newcastle. Uh, then Borussia Dortmund has failed to score in the first two group games. So this is not looking good. So I'm going to go for Asian Handicap minus 0.25 for Newcastle. This is my conservative bet. So basically, if they lose, you suffer only half a lose. Um, but I like Newcastle to win, 182. I really like it. And Newcastle to score over 1.5 goals, 176. No, sorry, 167. And I'm going to uh, flag another market that... Perhaps our listeners should uh, know about. Uh, Newcastle United has kept uh, two clean sheets in the Champions League and Dortmund hasn't scored yet. A clean sheet for Newcastle United, 275. But my favorite one here is Asian Handicap minus 0.25 for Newcastle United. Oh, one. sorry, Alvo. They kept one clean sheet in the Champions League, Newcastle, because PSG has scored. Yeah. For one. You are right. You are right. Yeah, yeah. One, one clean, clean, one yes, clean yes, sheet. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Thank you. The bookies expect uh, an over eh, in this game. Over 2.5 goals is 1.8. Mm. Under 2.5 goals is 2.2. So they expect uh, goals in this game. Really interesting, really balanced. Eh? Borussia Dortmund is a team very difficult to read, also in the Bundesliga. But five consecutive victories. So they are in a good moment and uh, they have their European pedigree. And also in this group, uh, as I said in the beginning, if uh, Newcastle and PSG win both home games, uh, it's a huge step forward. PSG recovering in League 1 with two consecutive victories. Uh, of course, they are still remembering that defeat against Newcastle because it's a big club and they are not allowed to lose in this way. Álvaro and uh, Milan coming from a defeat against Juventus, a team that cannot score in Europe yet this season. And uh, in this case, to be honest, I can understand why PSG is that favorite 1.8, I would take. Yeah, basically, uh, these oh. odds remind me of the odds that uh, were at a stake for PSG versus Dortmund a couple of uh, game days ago. And they are very similar. I think that Milan is better than Dortmund. Let's begin by that. Uh, because uh, Milan deserved way more against Newcastle United at San Siro in that first game of the Champions League. Um, but on the other hand, I think that PSG is a better side than Milan. And at home, they're going to use uh, their home factor just to get as many points as possible. I have explained this um, five, ten minutes ago when I said that I think that the home games are going to be the key deciding games in this uh, in this group. Whoever fails at home is going to be doomed, probably. And I think that uh, I'm going to back PSG. Kylian Mbappé is uh, playing really good football, by the way. And little by little, Luis Enrique is finding... Uh, his best possible lineup. Uh, we have to say that Ther Emery is out. So that will give a chance to Carlos Soler or Fabian Ruiz, I guess. And uh, in the weekend, by the way, Carlos Soler and Fabian Ruiz were good. And, um, you know, this uh, may change a little bit PSG's uh, approach and uh, speed in midfield because Carlos Soler and Fabian, they're a little bit slower than Ther Emery and they want to keep the ball a little bit more. But I think that as long as Luis Enrique doesn't play with a 4-2-4 as he did against Newcastle, um, then PSG is going to be competitive. But that uh, formation was suicidal um, at St. James's Park. I don't think Luis Enrique will repeat the mistake again. And when it comes to Milan, look, Milan are a good team. I know that they lost against Juventus in the weekend. I know that they have many players out. And this is something that... Uh, they will have to fight against and uh, make sure that they qualify no matter what, no matter how. And then in February, they will recover so many players. But uh, Milan hasn't conceded a goal in their last um, four Champions League group stage matches. So that tells you the story of Milan. Last season, again, they managed to reach uh, uh, very... Uh, um, to get very far in the Champions League, just uh, not conceding and um, using the tight margins very well. But still, I'm going to back PSG here to win. 180. And as I said, uh, the conservative option is not bad for me as long as then you mix it with something, something else and you combine Asian Handicap minus 0.25 for PSG, 155. What a week, Danny, for Milan. They lost to Juventus. Uh, yeah. They have Napoli at the weekend and in the middle, the visit to Paris. Yeah, tough week. Uh, Milan won't lose the Scudetto this week and they won't lose the Champions League this week but they will know whether they cannot win it or if they seriously compromise. Because, yes, the defeat against Juventus was uh, unfair, I would say, because the game was really drab, was really boring. It was a nil-nil written all over it. But then after 40 minutes, Malik Chao 
made one of those mistakes that is not a uh, stranger to make, a positional mistake, then he held Moise Ken and he got, a, got sent off. Milan backtrack, Juventus out of a sudden sniffed the chance to score and they score with an own goal, a shoot from distance for Locatelli, deflected by Krunic. As I said, he was a nil-nil written all over it. But on the other hand, Milan did create only one chance in the first half and Leao went missing again in a big match. This is a little bit concerning for Milan, who, by the way, had a lot of injuries to deal with. There was no Teo Hernandez, there was no Mike Magnan, there was no the second goalkeeper that had to play with a fair goalkeeper. Ruben Loftus-Cheek was missing as well. So, you know, it's not easy to deal with that Chukwueze was out too. However, they go into this game, perhaps with the confidence that if you look at both sides, apart from the superstar Mbappe, I think Milan, man-to-man, are the similar quality as PSG. Of course, PSG have got a superstar who can change games, whereas Milan big players, Leao, is a little bit of it and miss. PSG, I think, is a team in transition. It is a team that this season will get better, but there will be a lot of ups and downs. There will be uh, bumps in the road. Uh, it is a team that, of course, with young players, with fitter players, it's perfect for Luis Enrique, but they need to follow him and find the right way. He changes a lot of formations, and I think this time he will go with a cautious one rather than go with a front four, as he did against Newcastle. And Milan, on the other hand, they are more accomplished in their style of play. Uh, they got a stronger identity for me. And what Alvaro mentioned last season about the good results away from home could translate here. If you look at the... I know we, we mentioned a lot of expected goals, but if you look at the expected goals difference in the Champions League, no other team should have had scored more goals than Milan because they do miss a lot of chances against Newcastle, against Borussia Dortmund. And you think that somehow, at some point, something has to give. Um, I don't see Paris Saint-Germain winning by a very large margin. Last season, remember, they always conceded a home in every single Champions League game. The defense of PSG still leaves me a little bit uh, unconvinced. Milan Skriniar, we saw him a lot of time in Italy. I'm not sure he's so convincing in a back four. Plays better in a back three for me. Uh, but having said that, I think PSG, yeah, stronger side. But I'm going to favor Milan here just a little bit. I'm going to go plus 0. 0.75 on the Asian handicap for Milan, 192, which means if they draw, if you draw, if they draw, you win. If they win, you win. If they lose by only one goal, which I think is probably the most likely outcome, you lose half a stake, but you think it's worth a go. Well, Milan, zero goals scored, zero goal conceded, as Danny said, especially in the home game against uh, Newcastle United. They had so many chances. Uh, now that I was watching the Netflix documentary about Beckham, a very special game yes. for David Beckham, of course. And for Carlo Ancelotti, for instance. Uh, two and for Donnarumma. For Donnarumma. Donnarum. Donnarum. Yeah, Milan born and bred and, lo- and le- left on a free and, uh, yeah, in, in, in disgrace. The Hernandez for, for brothers, the so many... Yes, it's a bit, it's a bit of a lot. Do, yes. Did you think, guys, that uh, Milan has a similar squad quality-wise to PSG? Because I'm not uh, a fan of PSG, but I think oh. PSG is way better. Eh? Apart from Mbappé, I don't, I don't see Milan being... Uh, I don't Daniel, see Milan... Uh, apart Gonzalo from Mbappé... Ramos, Colomuani, Achraf... Hakimi, Lucas Hernandez. Yeah, but you got, on the other side, you Are got... Are you sure? I don't, I don't and, see... And on top of that, even Ugarte, player who is adapting, is a player that Milan would like to have now because Benacer is injured. Mi, mi, Milan, Milan's midfield is really good with Reinders. You got Loftus-Cheek. Adli's playing well. Probably the defense. So yeah, the right back position with Calabria. But you got Tomori, England international. Theo Hernandez. Um... Leao, Pulisic playing well. I, I, I don't see such a Danny, big gap. Goalkeeper Pulisic wise, have a probably. Chance to play for PSG. Well, goalkeeper wise, but mañana. I, I well, why do you think Pulisic, 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 Pulisic wouldn't play for PSG? Right? No. Well, I mean, they, they went no. for a different type of, type of player, but I don't, I don't think I don't think is a is a player still still can say something. Well, interesting it, 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 discussion here, actually. Alvaro, let's ask uh, our audience uh, if they hmm. think PSG have a way better Apart squad. from Bappé. Apart, apart from, from Bappé, of course. Mbappé I mean, Bappé is, is an another guy. He's a free yeah. agent in two months. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> apart from uh, Bappé. The others, of course, Mbappé is top quality. Well, uh, Group G is the next one. This is uh, less interesting, to be honest. 
because here PSG, uh, sorry, Man City and Leipzig, they should qualify even almost in this match day or in match day four, it will be written all over. Man City traveling to Switzerland to play against uh, Young Boys. Uh, Danny, the thing is where to find the betting angle in this Oof. game because seeing the Man City we are seeing in the last weeks, for sure I wouldn't grab the Asian handicap for Man City because it looks like they don't have uh, a lot of gasoline in the deposit. The good news for Pep Guardiola is that uh, everyone is fit, apart from uh, De Bruyne. So they, I think they pay the price for a lot of injuries. Now, with Stones back, uh, Rodri, of course, back from suspension, everyone's fit. Manchester City should start getting the results that we are used to see them. They won against Brighton. They were coming on the back of two Premier League defeats. But, you know, again, probably the results, the recent results are a little bit deceptive. A sign that things should get better for them. If you look, again, there was a lot of analysis during the international break of expected goals against four. Manchester City would outstrip the rivals. They are creating more and better chances than anyone else in the Premier League. And they are somehow depriving their opponents who score won the goals, sometimes a bit of a fluke goals. So, you know, it's just... Uh, Maybe it's just a moment, but it's true that Manchester City have lost experience, have lost quality in the summer. It takes a while to readjust. Uh, Alan scored for Manchester City, and it is three games dry spell. It's more of a news when Alan doesn't score than when he scores, too, by the way. And the young boys, uh, they only lost two of the last 30, 16 games in all competition this season, won four of the last six at the weekend, nil nil against Zurich. They remain second in the table with a game in hand. They score in three out of four Champions League games this season. A few seasons ago, they beat Manchester United in Switzerland, but I don't think they're going to repeat the exploit, the value. Manchester City to be Manchester City. Probably a little bit ponderous on the way, but to win 2 nil for me, 195, like a 2 nil win, 3 nil win, I think is on the card. And I'm surprised the the, 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 the odds for Manchester City winning without conceding are so high. 195, as I said. Well, because, uh, Alvaro, the two weak teams in this group, uh, Young Boys and Red Star, they are able to score and they are showing it in the first two match days. Yeah, Young Boys scored, uh, what was that, two goals against the uh, Red Star? Yes. And then they yes. managed to score one against Leipzig. So, yeah, that, that's why I guess the the odds for a clean sheet for Manchester City are that high. Mm, you know... I'm going to back Manchester City as well, as Daniel yeah. does, but my approach is going to be slightly different. Uh, you can make a combination, but it doesn't pay a lot, actually. Manchester City to win and over 2.5 goals in the game, 157. Uh, I think that there is better value in Manchester City to score in both halves. That pays 175. I like this one a lot. Yeah. And um, I also like over 1.5 goals in the second half. Not for Manchester City, but in the game in general. That pays 180. Having said that, Keep in mind something, that there is a statistical oddity that hasn't happened for a while now. There are four teams in the Premier League who have scored more goals than Manchester City. This is not very common after nine games. And uh, the funny thing is the identity of those sides, because one of them is Liverpool. Fine, fair enough. But the other ones are Aston Villa, Newcastle, and Brighton and Hove Albion. Uh, Manchester City is not scoring as many, but on the other hand, this has to do with the, or at least in the Premier League, has to do with the suspension of Rodri. Rodri uh, is back, and Manchester City is doing better in the Premier League, and Rodri was always in the Champions League, and Manchester City benefits from that. There is one thing, though, that I would like to remark again. I think that I, I, I made a reference to this in the previous show. I don't think that Manchester City has signed really good midfielders just to do the transition from Gundogan to someone else because Mateo Kovacic is nowhere near as good as uh, Gundogan and I think that he, for example, he failed at Real Madrid and uh, then at Chelsea he got good seasons but also bad seasons and uh, Mateo Nunes. None of them played the other day in Manchester City win. None of them played in the weekend. Zero minutes. They were on the bench. They're still adapting to Manchester City. They will end up adapting. I'm pretty sure about that. Guardiola will find a role for them. But if these two players are like that, and if Kevin De Bruyne is out, the likes of Bernardo Silva, Foden and Rodri are more important than ever. Fortunately, Foden is playing really good football too. Um, and Doku, by the way, the Belgian player, what a landing in English football. He's been fantastic. Um, yeah, as I said before, I think that Manchester City finally will start scoring. I don't know if free flow football, but scoring goals. So Manchester City to score in both halves, 175. 
Okay, well, I didn't, I don't think uh, Kovacic failed at Real Madrid. He was a squad member, let's say, average, uh, but perhaps uh, he expected more from Real Madrid or from his position. That's why he yeah. requested to leave the club and land in uh, Stamford Bridge uh, with Chelsea. Well, uh, in this group, also really low odds if we back uh, Leipzig against uh, Red Star, uh, Leipzig this season. It's a team to back, to be honest, because they made a good transfer and uh, Luis Openda is scoring plenty of goals. Uh, Alvaro is a fantastic squad. They have a good manager. Uh, the thing is uh, that Red Star, again, they show that they can score, even they scored uh, against City at the Etihad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, absolutely. Uh, but in this game, again, um, I have seen a pattern in the Champions League, generally speaking, with the exception of Manchester United. Um, who has been awful. Generally speaking, the good teams are uh, delivering and doing the job. And uh, I think that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back Leipzig here. Um, this game, by the way, could be a pass for me because some of the odds are really, really, really low. But uh, I like over 1.5 goals in the second half, uh, 167. I like it uh, because Red Star can score goals, that's for sure, and Leipzig at home. They are doing it. They won 3-1 in the weekend with a brace from Openda. Um, Leipzig or Marco Rose had the could actually have the have the luxury of a resting a player like Benjamin Sesco. Uh, Danny Olmo was playing again, and uh, you know they got so much firepower. Timo Werner doesn't play a lot, but we know what he can be capable of uh, when he's in a good run. And uh, Leipzig have scored two or more goals in 12 or the last 16 Champions League group stage games. So this is a, a statistic that doesn't apply to 1970. You know, this statistic is relevant. This is happening. It's been happening in the last two years. And I think that Leipzig is as good as they were last year, basically, or even better, despite the loss of uh, Nkunku, uh, who is at Chelsea and hasn't been able to play yet. So, you know, I'm going to go for what I said. Uh, over 1.5 goals in the second half and uh, Leipzig to score over 2.5 goals, which is something they do a lot. It pays 173, but I definitely prefer the previous one, and the previous shot. Mm -hmm. Dani and Red Star, they are four points behind the <sighs> leaders in uh, Serbia, but they've been competitive so far in this Champions League. Yeah, they've been competitive and they went for it. And, you know, with that manager, is somebody who last year managed uh, Maccabi Haifa. Played on the on the front foot. He likes to to have a go at it. Of course, against Manchester City, I think they suffered over thirty shots, which is a, a record. But he always going to happen. And yeah, I think they, they they are good at taking their chances. One of the weekend, three two. Uh, by the way, only the fifth win in the last nine games, but they are unbeaten in five. For me, Leipzig since they switched to Marco Rose, one of the best sides in Bundesliga, could have challenged for the title probably will be challenging for the title this season. Has scored the Leipzig in every single game this season despite, unless that nil-nil against Bochum when they missed two penalties, they scored 11 in four uh, home games and they scored two or more goals in 12 of the last 16 Champions League group stages. So they are a competitive score inside. Both to score for me, 180, as I said, probably a large win by Leipzig. You could go Leipzig win and over 2.5 goals. I think Red Star could pose a little bit of a threat. All right. Uh, last group, uh, Group H. Uh, also here is very difficult to find good <coughs> odds, uh, even if Alvaro said that he found good ones in Barcelona. Hmm. Shakhtar, yeah. which is uh, an early kickoff in Montjuic, uh, this uh, Barcelona... Alvaro, they beat your athletic, but they, they have many problems because they have so many absentees and they are struggling in every single game. The thing is that they are uh, back to the winning in tight margins, uh, like uh, with uh, Xavi last season, 1-0 against athletic. We saw also a 1-0 against uh, Porto in the Champions League with three victories. They will be finally in the last 16 round. It's difficult for Shakhtar not to put a fight uh, in this game. Yeah, I would say yes. Uh... Even though, you know, Shakhtar, they managed to get the best of Antwerp in the previous game, and Shakhtar won 3-2. And uh, then if you see the overall, um, you know, overall stats of Shakhtar lately in the Champions League, uh, you know, they have won only two of their last 15 Champions League group stage matches. Uh, yeah. But both victories came away from home. But I don't think at this time it's going to happen uh, because Barcelona this season they are not entertaining at all they are rather boring they are not playing 
very well, but they tend, number one, to dominate the games and they tend not to lose them and most of the times to win them. Uh, Barcelona in La Liga is uh, undefeated still. Uh, the only problem for Barcelona is that they got uh, too many draws, uh, but in the Champions League, they've got the best numbers so far. Really, it's incredible, but the best numbers in the Champions League are Barcelona's because they got six points exactly as the as a few leaders from the other groups. Then uh, they have scored six, which is fine, and then they have conceded zero. I mean, probably those are the best numbers of the Champions League. The goal differential is a plus six. It's true that they've got a very easy group this time, but they are making the most of it. And against Porto, for example, uh, they ended up winning a game that they would have lost last season, yeah. most likely. So little by little, little they are getting there despite the injuries because the players that are missing are very important because uh, Pedri, who could return, by the way, has been out for a long time. Frankie de Jong, uh, a differential midfielder, is still out and he won't be playing this time. And uh, Oriol Romeo is replacing uh, Sergio Busquets, but Oriol Romeo doesn't have the quality of Busquets. So yeah. Barcelona has been relying on Gundogan and uh, mainly Gavi just to create football. And Gavi, by the way, is suspended for this game. So maybe this will accelerate the comeback of Pedri. But if Pedri doesn't come back, Gavi is out, De Jong is out. Uh, Barcelona is very likely to play in the midfield. I will say, I will speculate with Romeo, Gundogan and Fermin, a guy from the academy who is good. But, you know, it's still to be seen how good he is as a midfielder because I have the feeling that he's a rather number 10 or a winger than a, than a midfielder. But anyway, I think that they are favorite. Mm, this game, by the way, will bring good memories for Barcelona because uh, Shakhtar Donetsk were the rival in the European Super Cup when they won it in 2009, and Barcelona ended up winning six titles in um, in one year. And in the weekend, Barcelona won, by the way, with another um, goal from an academy uh, player, like, uh, what was his name? Mark Guyu, yeah, who scored after 34 seconds on the pitch. He came onto the pitch, 30 seconds, 34 seconds later, he was scoring. But yeah, many... Players out for Barcelona, uh, also Rafinha and Lewandowski, so not only midfielders, also attackers, but I still back them. I think that they are better, and uh, Barcelona are going to get probably three points here. So I'm going to go for Barcelona to score in both halves, 163, over 1.5 goals in the second half, 167. You know, you can do a combination if you like, and I like Barcelona to win at 30 minutes. I like this one a lot, 183. Imagine the story for this uh, young guy, Maro Guyu, uh, debut. It was his debut. And yes. after yes. 25 seconds, he scores the winner against Athletic. Still, Dani, uh, well, we have a Clásico, by the way, on Saturday. This Barcelona, they don't play well. That's no, a- they don't, but they win. And against Porto, they dug deep, they won. Without Lewandowski, it's difficult. I mean, you have to you, you have to admit it, and they don't create as many chances as they did last season. But you know, the good numbers in Europe so far to clean sheets last season in Europe, they conceded every single game, also in the Europa League when they dropped out. So there are some encouraging games so far. Kept seven clean sheets so far this season. Last season they won La Liga by keeping clean sheets by Ter Stegen heroics. Let's see if they go back to that to that kind of form as well. Again, Ukrainian champion Shakhtar. I won four of the last seven league matches, won 3-0 at the weekend. Uh, they kept three clean sheets in seven away games. Uh, they probably will have issues keeping the ball, controlling the ball, even against the makeshift midfield of Barcelona. Barcelona are going to start them from possession. I think is a win from Barcelona, but the odds for me, the real value here is the under 3.5 goals, 185. I think is that's way, way too high. I don't know. Maybe the book is thinks Lewandowski might be back because he's not. But considering the p- players missing, the suspension, the injuries, under 3.5 goals for me, that really looks a value. It could be a 2 nil win for Barcelona. Even a 3 nil win for Barcelona, which is very large for Champions League standard, lands you 185. I would go for that. Yeah, the guy that uh, Alvaro mentioned, Fermin, was playing as a fake number nine, for instance, because there is a big gap in uh, Barcelona's squad right now. Yeah. Without Lewandowski, and the last game is Royal Amberp uh, Porto. Beautiful odds uh, to back Porto, because yes. Danny, this Amberp, uh, they don't look competitive, they don't look as a Champions League team. Porto, they have the pedigree, they deserve better against Barca, they beat Shakhtar comfortably away. In my opinion, this is a no-brainer going for Porto. Last year, Antwerp in the in the Belgian league had the best defensive record. And I think you also have to be wary of these things when it comes to playing in the Champions League. By the way, they are debutants. 
Champions League football is not won by nil nils. It's not by won by keeping a lot of clean sheets. You need to outscore them. You need to score two or three and expose yourself sometimes to concede a couple. And I think Royal Antwerp don't have the strikers and don't have the firepower to make sure they can score three or four goals without conceding any. Uh, against um, against Shakhtar, yeah, they took the lead and they were and then they were defeated. So again, I would consider maybe their defense not even at that level. Um, they won five, five first win in six matches in all competition against Eupen a couple of uh, weeks ago. Lost 3-2 against Charleroi the weekend. So you see, they do uh, keep getting a lot of goals. Only one win in seven. They are fourth in the table. No clean sheets in the last three games. And Porto, by the way, I think there is a quirk in this Champions League round of matches. The only teams to play in the National Cups this weekend were the Portuguese. Porto, Braga, Benfica, they all played against Binos. Porto won 2-0 on Friday away in the cup. They could make a lot of rotation. So you could expect the Portuguese sides, Benfica, Braga, Porto, to be a little bit fresher, if you like, because they had easier games. And uh, yeah, uh, Porto, uh, you know, on course to challenge for the title again. As I said, the odds are too good not to take into account Porto win 2-15. Very good, the odds for Porto. Alvaro, you have any doubts of taking them? Uh, well, I'm not uh, sure about uh, anything in this life, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to... No, no, I'm, no, I'm no one is. No I'm, one is. Death, I'm gonna... taxes, and Porto win. I mean, that's uh, okay. It goes, so I think, I think I'm... it goes like this. No? I'm, I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna follow this logic then. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna back Porto. I'm gonna back Porto. Yeah, with an Asian handicap minus 0.25 uh, because they are playing away from home. And uh, also because it's true that they played in the cup in the weekend, but on uh, Sunday, seven players were missing the training. Um, important players, a few of them. The Pepe is going to be out, I think. Bendel, Ustakio, they were missing that training. So, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, Conceição will have to think about how to make a lineup. Maybe it is a little bit of a makeshift lineup, but still, they are better, and I back Porto. I mean, even though, uh, you know, Porto has lost important games this season, like uh, they lost against Benfica 1-0, then they lost against Barcelona. They haven't been perfect, but Royal Antwerp, so far, they are the worst side in the, in the Champions League because they got zero points. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Manchester United has zero as well, but they have considered eight And um, in their league, by the way, in their local league, they are sixth. So sixth. it's not the best season for them. Uh, they considered three against Shakhtar. And, uh, you know, the omens are not particularly good for them. So I could back Porto, as I said before, with uh, Asian handicaps. And in this case, the minus 0.25 makes a lot of sense. 183, if they lose, you suffer only half a lose. And if they win, you put in your pocket almost two. Alvaro likes to have his coffee with the Portuguese press, with Abola, and he knows that Sergio <laughs> Conceição is really concerned about the absentees in the... Good, good, good news season. about the players missing training. I could, I could not have seen it. I should, I, should, I should have read La Bola a little bit more, a bit more Abola, carefully. great newspaper. Yes. Well, uh, Alvaro, your safe tip is Porto to win or not, not that far? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm going to back Atletico this time. I think that... Uh, Spanish sides in Scotland, normally they do okay. So Asian handicap minus 0.25 for Atletico, 170. And Danny? Manchester City, Asian handicap minus 1.5 against Young Boys, 157. All right. And Danny, you're at Feyenoor, Lazio, under 3.5 goals. Atletico de Madrid, Asian handicap, zero. Leipzig, Red Star, over 2.5 goals. And Porto, Asian handicap, zero. Total odds, 440. I like this, Aka. Uh, Alvaro? How likely it is that my value is exactly Daniel's, 440, but with different odds, completely. Barcelona, Shakhtar, over 1.5 goals in the second half. Asian handicap, minus 0.25 for Atletico. Asian handicap, minus 0.25 for PSG. All together, 440. And, and now Mathema we... The mathematics is fantastic. Okay. It's the word of mathematics. And now, <laughs> then we see Celtic <laughs> winning Atletico de Madrid. Yeah, and we... winning... The Akaba. This is football. This is Champions League. It's never easy. I hope that at least you enjoyed the video. Thank you, Danny. Thanks, Alvaro. See you soon. Bye. Ciao.